Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we are going to cover how to produce data analysis reports in Excel using Python. We will utilize the code from the previous session and build on it. Previously in this video, we created well-formatted Excel reports. We filtered out the required data, formatted the data, and sent it to our end users. I will leave the link for the previous session in the description below if you want to check out the basics of Excel as SX Writer. We will build on this during this session. Let's say our users build visualizations and pivot tables on the data we provide. Rather than providing the data, we can automate the actual data analysis exercise that is consumed by the end user. To give you a sense, this will be our final report output that we will send to our end user. We have a report with header and subheader followed by a pivot table that summarizes the sales by product category and country. This gives us an overview of how products are doing across countries. We add a total column to summarize the sales for each country. Then we present this data in a bar chart to give the user a visual representation of this data. Rather than creating this report manually, we are going to automate it, let's say on a weekly basis for our end users. Okay, let's head over to Jupyter Notebook and let's start coding this solution. As usual, we will import the required libraries at the top. So for this solution, we're using Pandas, Open by Excel, and XLSX Writer. Make sure you have these libraries installed prior to running the code. We import the data into a Pandas data frame. The data and the notebook are available on GitHub. So let's go ahead and trim the data set to required columns only. For this solution, we are using country, product category, and sales. Our first ask is to create a pivot table with product category on rows and countries on the column. And we summarize the sales across these two. We utilize the pivot underscore table function for this. We set the index to product category. This will set the row values. To the column argument, we provide the country. And we are analyzing the sales column, so we'll set the sales to values. And we are trying to aggregate sales across these columns. So we will perform sum on the sales. Therefore, we set the aggregate function to sum. Since we are dealing with large numbers, we'll go ahead and round them to zero. So we don't display the decimal places after zero. We will save this into a report underscore table variable. Let's go ahead and display this variable once the pivot table is generated. This is our pivot table. So that we will display this at the top of our report. Next, we'll work on the column chart. Let's take a look at a sample column chart. The chart module is a base class for modules that implement charts in Excel SX Writer. We create a workbook and add a worksheet. In the workbook, we add a chart object of type column. We have the data as series. In this scenario, there are three series. The series data is written to columns with write column method. This will give us the data in the sheet. Now we have the data. Let's configure the chart. The data is added to the chart with cell reference with the help of add series function. We set the values to the cells from the sheet. Now we have the data and our chart is configured. We add it to the worksheet with insert chart function. This produces the column chart that you see on the screen. So following this logic, we will add a chart to our report. We save the pivot table variable to an Excel file and we will add a sheet to this workbook. Since we plan on adding headers to this file, we will write the data starting from the third row. Rather than hard coding the cell reference to the data points for our chart, we will get the data reference with active cell. We find the min and max active columns as well as the rows where the data is populated and we save them in variables. Let's go ahead and instantiate an instance of the bar chart object. 
we set the height and width of this object so it aligns with our pivot table. We'll use the reference function to add data. To the reference function, we provide the references to the cell ranges. First to the sales number, we'll provide the active cell ranges that we have saved in the variables above. This will take care of the sales figures. And then we need to provide labels such as country and product subcategory. We'll go ahead and save these to local variables. And later on, we'll add these variables to our chart. Following this, we add the data with add data function and set labels with set categories function from our variables. We set the location where this chart will be displayed and add a title to it. Next, we take care of the formatting of the columns and data. We need to fix the width of the column so they fit the data. Worksheet objects have row dimension and column dimension attributes that control the row height and column width. With column dimension, we set the column width as we loop through the columns. In the subsequent cell, we add the heading and format the numbers. This is borrowed from the previous session, so I'll skip over this. Next, we figure out how many columns we have in our workbook with max call variable. First, we get the ASCII character from the first index to max call index. Second, we loop through these columns and generate the formula for the total row. We set the formatting for this column and give it a heading. Finally, we save the modified workbook. The workbook is saved in the same location as our notebook, but if you want to, we can provide a different location for it. Let's go ahead and open our newly generated Excel report and review it. So we have our headers and subheaders followed by our pivot table that is nicely formatted and text fits within the columns. And following this, we have the same data represented in a bar chart. So this is how we automate Excel data analysis reports with Python. This is all for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.